I, I took this fantastic um, test automation university course with Alan Richardson. And th this course is completely full of what I would call inclusive automation. It's a kind of a, a, a very, very reasonable way to, to use code as, and from the perspective of someone that doesn't know how to code, doesn't know JavaScript, but just wants to know enough about the browser, about JavaScript, about CSS to be kind of mildly effective or with those things, enough to be really effective at making your testing better. I can't encourage you enough if, if you're at all interested in automation, especially a web-based, uh, to take this course. It's it's amazing. I, I, I was I was fanboying it out um, throughout the whole the whole thing. Thinking this is great, and and as part of that, what I did is uh, Alan in, in the in the course used the dev tools inside of uh, the browser to execute and write his own automation using like right inside of the, the console. Well, I was curious, and, and now that so that's using kind of the browser APIs, the things that are internal to the browser to automate it. I was like, well, then, well, if I, from an inclusive perspective, maybe I don't write JavaScript. Maybe my team doesn't write JavaScript. Uh, maybe my toolbox isn't the browser uh, or isn't internal to the browser. Maybe it's Selenium, like so many other people. Um, so what I did is I took his course contents uh, and the mission here. He uses a, a site called uh, To Do MVC. We'll take a look at it in just a second. Um, but I did that with Ruby inside a Jupyter Notebook. So to give you kind of an overview of what a Jupyter Notebook is, uh, they're, they're very, very common and very popular in data science. Uh, but what they let you do is they let you mix Markdown, which is a, a, a syntax uh, for, for uh, rendering. It's kind of like HTML, but it's much more pared down. It renders HTML. And it, it lets you mix that with code. And you can execute these on the fly. So right now, I've got, I've got kind of a, it looks like a pretty form. Uh, but what you can see here, let me get rid of this. If I double click on it, it's just a markdown text field. Uh, if I click run, it goes into this beautiful thing. So the, each each notebook is comprised of what these are, are called cells. And there's either a mark it's either a markdown cell or a code cell. Those are the only kind of ones that matter. So I did this kind of the first one is just kind of getting kind of working process. Can I get this to work? Uh, so you can see right here, this is loading up, uh, we're using Ruby and, and water, which is a wrapper around Selenium that some folks in Ruby use. And this kind of wires it all together. So what, what we kind of start off with is, I just want to do certain functionality within the application. So what, and in my toolbox, it's the it, to do, you can add one, you can update one, you can remove one, and there's some filtering. I've got a better example, we'll see. But you can get a sense where a toolbox might be just adding, here's the code to add one, I can run it, and I'll add one. But most people, I don't, and we don't have the kind of bandwidth in testing to say like, I want my automation people or a developer to come write this separate thing for me outside of my my typical uh, existing end-to-end -end tests. And I think the big value and kind of efficiency here is if we can use the code, our page objects or whatever automation code we already have and plug that into something else besides a unit testing framework, something like Jupyter Notebooks, and consume that same code at, 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 for a different purpose. 